Hello again, my name is Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the 8-bit IC7 Max 3 motherboard. What is included in this package are four serial ATA hard drive cables, two serial ATA power cables. You can plug up to four serial ATA hard drives into these two cables. Included as well are two IDE rounded cables one for the hard drives and one for the floppy drive, an I.O. shield plate, some software drivers, and a manual. Also here we have two extra FireWire ports and two extra USB ports. This device gets installed into your PCI slot at the back of your case, and this end goes directly connected into your motherboard. And here we have the motherboard, but also included is Secure IDE. This is a device which gets plugged directly into your hard drive to provide data encryption. The Secure IDE product that is included does offer you security on a hard drive. And the way it works is pretty simple, really. You just plug it into the hard drive, you plug the other end into a cable, that cable goes into your motherboard. Then there's another power cable included. One end goes into this device, the other end goes into the hard drive, the other end goes into your power supply. You also get a cable, that cable goes plugged into the Secure IDE device, and then you plug a security key into the other end of that cable in order to get the whole system to work. This motherboard is based upon the Intel 875P chipset. Right here is where you install the Pentium 4 CPU. You can install up to 4 gigabytes of either single or dual channel memory. Right here is a floppy controller and the two regular IDE controllers. Also you have two RAID controllers, one by Silicon Image and one by Intel. Five PCI slots, one AGP slot. And this motherboard does have active cooling on the chipset, a nice large heatsink and a fan. Two power connections, one right here and one right here. Also five fan headers on the board but two of those are taken up. One by the cooler which is on the chipset and the other one by the OTS or outside thermal exhaust system. The three that are free well there's two right here and one right here. Having a fan in this location on any motherboard is extremely odd. However, it's part of the OTES or outside thermal exhaust system. This system is comprised of plastic which covers the hot components on the motherboard. These hot components radiate heat and the fan helps port all that heat. And remember, it's porting it outside of your case. In normal situations, it will just radiate the heat inside the case and of course that will increase the inside of your case temperature and you really want to keep that down as low as possible. Right here we have two PS2 ports, one for the keyboard and the mouse, an optic in and out. This motherboard does have six channel audio, four USB 2 ports, one firewire port and a LAN port. And to give you an idea how loud this fan is, have a listen. You'll also notice that they have green LEDs in this OTS. And to give you an idea how loud the fan is on the chipset, have a listen. And this is with both fans on, the one on the OTS as well as the chipset. Within the soft menu 3 setup part of the BIOS is where you can go to adjust different settings like the front side bus as well as the DRAM ratio and the voltages. First let's have a look here at the very top. If you have a CPU and you don't want to overclock it, well you can just leave it at the normal settings which you see right now. Or you can go ahead here and adjust for example the front side bus setting and go all the way up to 412 megahertz. Another important feature in this BIOS if you're overclocking is the DRAM ratio. You can see here, you can leave it by SPD or you got a number of options here, 3, 2, 5, 4, 1, 1. Now what does all that mean? Well, for example, if you were to have a front side bus of 260 megahertz, 3, 2 would equal a front side bus of approximately 174 megahertz. And if you had 5, 4, that would equal a front side bus of 208 megahertz. And if you had 1 to 1, that equals a front side bus of 260 megahertz. An important part to any BIOS when you're overclocking is the ability to adjust the AGP ratio and in this one you can. You can go an automatic setting or you can have a number of other settings or you can have a fixed setting and that means that you'll be able to keep 
that AGP and PCI frequency down when you have a high front side bus to keep everything stable. At the bottom here you can adjust the number of voltages for the CPU, the memory, and the video card. For the CPU you can go all the way up to 1.9 volts. For the memory you can go all the way up to 3.2 volts. For the video you can go all the way up to 1.65 volts. Within the advanced BIOS features, part of the BIOS is where you can go to adjust things like the hyper-threading technology and also adjust the different boot priority. For example, you can see here where this PCI slot device is. Well, if you don't want to have that as the boot device, you can go ahead, for example, and have that onboard serial ATA controllers to be your boot device. You can also adjust the first boot, second boot, and third boot, and so on. Within the advanced chipset is where you can go to adjust and tweak your memory settings and more. Here at the top you can see you can do a buy SPD option on the memory where you can manually select it. If you do, you can go and adjust the timings manual. You can see as well further down here you can adjust that AGP mode to eight times and even further down here you've got the game accelerator and you can tweak the system with that even more. Within the integrated peripherals part of the BIOS is where you can go to enable and disable things like the onboard RAID, the onboard serial ATA, the onboard audio, the onboard USB, the onboard firewire, and so on. And finally, the PC health status. In here is where you can view all the different temperatures, the different fan speeds, and all of the voltages. Here at the top you can see you can set a fan alarm if the fan was to fail. You can also set a shutdown temperature and a CPU warning temperature. The 3D Mark 03 result is 5743. These are the settings used in the Comanche 4 demo, a screen resolution of 1280 by 1024 at 32 bit. I've checked texture compression, I've disabled VSync, and hardware shaders are checked. And the result is 60.65 frames per second. These are the settings used in the Quake 3 Arena demo, a video mode of 1280 by 1024 at 32 bit. Geometric detail is at high, texture detail is at max, texture quality is 32 bit, and the texture filter is trilinear. And the result is 189.1 frames per second. I've used all the default settings in the XS mark except for a screen resolution of 1280 by 1024 at 32 bit. And the result is 8747. The Unreal Tournament 2003 results at a screen resolution of 1280 by 960 are the flyby is 218 and the bot match is 83. The Sci Software Sandra CPU result is 10,684. The Sci Software Sandra CPU multimedia result is 16,047. The Sci Software Sandra memory result is 6,352. And using the Intel RAID controller, the Sci Software Sandra hard drive result is 51,613. This motherboard has it all, onboard audio, onboard RAID, onboard LAN, onboard USB, and so on. It's great at overclocking, it performs very well, and it's stable. Overall, this product is kick-ass. Again, my name is Rodney Reynolds, and this has been another video review. Be sure to check back very soon. I will have a brand new one for you then. Also, pop into my website at www.3dgameman.com. And while you're there, you can go into the forums and register. And remember, registration is completely free. Also, keep in mind, you can find a lot more on this product in the forums. Until next time, take care.